Hi, today I want to show you my latest hardware donation. So this is the Gatemate FPGA starter kit from Cologne Chip. First let's talk a little bit about what is an FPGA. FPGA stands for Field Programmable Gate Array and you can think of it as a chip with a lot of logic cells in it. A logic cell can contain latches, flip-flops and logic gates like AND or NAND or NOR. The cool thing about FPGAs is you can program how various logic cells are connected to one another and by doing so you can run any digital logic circuit on an FPGA. This gives you the ability for a lot of various applications. So you can program an FPGA to act as a BCD27 segment decoder or a decoder for more complex displays. You can run state machines on it or you can even run your own implemented processor cores on an FPGA. A lot of times when companies are developing new chips or new digital chips, what they are doing is they are starting with FPGA prototyping because this way if they find a bug in their design, they can just change it. And then when they are done and they have tested their design enough, then they will order the silicon from a silicon vendor and then they will have the first revision of the chip. So FPGAs give you a lot of flexibility during your um, design process. Okay, so much for FPGAs. Now let's take a look at the vendor, Cologne Chip. So Cologne Chips sponsored me this FPGA evaluation board. And of course I have to say thank you for this donation. So here we are on the webpage of Cologne Chip. And you can see they're advertising as the only European FPGA. So the company is based in Germany and they are designing and producing this FPGA here exclusively in Germany. So let's take a look at the FPGA. So the FPGA itself is called Gatemate and here we have a description. So the Gatemate FPGA family of Cologne chips addresses all application requirements of small to medium sized FPGAs. So this is not um, the... so this is more uh, entry to mid-level FPGA. And this FPGA implements 20,000 logic cells and gives you 40,000 flip-flops or latches. So yeah, this is a medium level FPGA. For example, a uh, entry level FPGA would be this one here, which is part of the icebreaker board. So here you can see we only have 5,000 logic cells. So the gatemate has four times more than this one here. Also we have four phase locked loops and we also have a serializer deserializer which can be used for data transfers up to 5 gigabits per second. And this one I find quite interesting in particular because in theory if you want to implement a PCI Express connection you could use this serializer deserializer and with 5 gigabits per second you can even have speeds up to Gen 2, which is quite nice. Sadly, currently um, there is no um, yeah, FPGA designs available for um, PCI Express, but maybe this will change in the future. So from IO perspective, we get 162 um, IOs and 81 differential IOs. So you can combine two IOs to a differential pair, which is quite cool. So the IO Voltage level can be 1.2 to 2.5 volts. And all pins support double data rate. So this means you can, if you have a clock, you can sample on the falling and the rising edge of the clock. Okay, the, it has some performance modes. So the core voltages range from 0 0.9 volt to 1.1 volts. So yeah, this is a quite um, impressive FPGA and you can even see it, it is using a ball layout so it don't have pins like this one here which are only at the end. No, this is using a ball grid so this it's more modern but of course you can't solder it by hand. Okay, so now let's take a look at the box. So I think this is a really fine, nice looking box. Let's open it up. So in here we have the Gatemate Starter um, Kit FPGA board. Up here we have a small programmer. 
So this board has an onboard programmer, but later when you have designed your own hardware with the um, Gatemate FPGA, you can use this programmer to program it. And up here we will have some more accessories. So we have a mini USB cable and this ribbon cable for the programmer. One thing yeah, which looks a little bit old is this mini USB port. So a USB-C port would be more modern, but yeah, in terms of transfers, using mini USB is also quite okay. So we have this port here on the programmer, but also here on the evaluation board. And now I would say we will take a closer look at the board from its datasheet. Okay, now let's take a closer look at the evaluation board itself. So here if you go under programmable logic, we can find a link to the evaluation board. And here we have a picture of the evaluation board. So let me open this up and now let's go over what is implementing on this evaluation board. So maybe let's start with the most important thing, the Gatemate FPGA itself, which is here. Here we have an SBI flash with eight megabytes in size, which will contain the program which will be loaded on the Gatemate FPGA. Here we have the ability to use HyperRAM and HyperFlash devices. So basically HyperRAM is, yeah, is a kind of managed DRAM, so you can have some RAM memory on your board, but the interface is a little bit simpler, like a standard DRAM interface. For example, you don't have to take care of refreshing the device. This is already done in the device itself. Okay. So here we have connectors for the various IOs of the gatemate. But the thing is we regret the IO voltage can where can be only up to 2.5 volts. But what is if you want to connect it to normal 3.3 volt um, pins, for example? Well, luckily we have some PMOD or two PMOD connectors up there. And these PMOD connectors can be configured to run with 3.3 volt or 2.5 volt, depending on the switch here. So, and the way this is done is here we have two voltage shifters which will translate the I.O. voltage of the FP Gatemate FPGA into 3.3 or 2.5 volts. Here we have some user LEDs and a user button if you want to use it. Here we have pins for the cl output clocks of the FPGA. Down here we could solder down pins for our serializer, deserializer. And here we have access to the SBI pins over which we could program the flash or we also have access to the JTAG pins for debugging what's ongoing on the FPGA. The evaluation board comes with an onboard programmer which we can see here and basically it's using an FTDI chip for this so this will give us access or this will bridge the USB to an SPI and to a JTAG connection. Over this dip switch we can configure the mode so we can configure how the system starts up and by default the system is configured for SBI slave or this is a configuration um, yeah I got the board with and in this case I think um, we can program the flash and then the gatement will boot from this flash here. So here we have a reset button and some status LEDs telling us what's the current state of the board. So if we don't want to program it we can also use this power USB connector, so this will only power the board. Over this dip switch, we can select which, um, yeah, from which USB connector the device should be powered. And up here we have a power supply unit which regenerates the various core voltages from the, um, yeah, from the five volt, um, from the USB connector. And this thing here is quite cool. Over these two dip switches, we can fine tune the core voltage. So we can test it over the fully um, yeah, available range from 0 0.9 volts up to 1.2 volts, which is quite cool. Yeah, okay, so this is about the FPGA board. Now let's take a look at the yeah, data sheet of the evaluation board. So for getting this, I have to go back to the Gatemate FPGA and under documentation, you can find everything you need. So the data sheet of the FPGA, the data sheet of the evaluation board, the schematic, the 
even the datasheet for the programmer and the schematic for the programmer, which is really nice. Down here you have some user guides, for example, how you can set up the toolchain, or here are some libraries, so you don't have to invent everything from scratch, which is quite cool. And I will show you in a later video how to set up the toolchain and compile a Hello World example for this. Down here we have an application note for how to interface peripheral devices with 3.3 volt signaling. Because we have seen on the evaluation board, it's solved by using level shifters. Down here we have some more yeah, regulation documents and down here we fi can find the CAD models, so the footprints and the um, symbols for the GateMate FPGA and we will, can have it, we have it available for KiCad and Altium Designer, which is quite a good choice because KiCad is free and open source, so it's really cool we have KiCad footprints available here. Okay, so let's take a brief look at the FPG of the evaluation board datasheet. So here it is. In this document, you, there, here you can find a much more detailed overview about what the FPGA board offers than I will give you in this video. And the cool thing is it also includes, so here we have an overview of the board, what is connected to it. And down here, you can see the board is split up in multiple sections and for every section you can find small or you can find um, not the schematic itself, but a simplified schematic. So this is easier for you if you want to know what all the components does. So this is quite convenient. For example, here you can also find the configurations for the various jumpers we have. So I think this is this is a really quite nice document. For example, here you can see how the programmer works, how it's set up. So if you're interested in it, please take a look at it. Okay, cool. So I guess that for today. I will do some more videos on the GateMate FPGA. At least I will do a video where I will install the toolchain, but maybe I will also do a small project by my own on it. And maybe if I will even try to get a small processor core run on this GatePad FPGA chip. So please let me know in the comments what you think I should do with this FPGA. So I guess that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash for Linux. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.